Here's the guts video of a drainage, now drainage BMI. Universal Disturbance Analyzer Series 626. It's uh, somewhat uh, reasonably decent to high end, at one time hideously expensive, because while I couldn't find anything on the original or even a rebuild price for this thing on the company website when I got it seven years ago, the, re the cards in it, just the cards that I could find information on, were combined over $3,200 for rebuilds. So obviously this thing was at least five figures. There's the two uh, control keys. Because, because this is intended for applications where it could be sitting analyzing something for an extended period of time, it's got controls so that you can pretty much set this thing so that you can't mess with the settings on it by just taking the keys up and depending on the, on the um, setting. The printout mode key is removable in any position. The function key, which is like the main auto switch slash mode selector, is only removable in the operate position. But they are keyed identically. And it's got a bunch of... It's got a bunch of uh, various program setting adjustment keys, program selector, and other stuff. Don't really know what a whole lot of what any of this stuff does because... Chicken. Because when I first got the thing, it was... Uh, I contacted the company as far as a manual for this, and they'd be willing to send me one for 175 bucks. So needless to say, I don't... And it, of course, didn't come with any documentation. So pretty much, I use this thing to the extent that I figured out from messing around it, with it. But anyways, now for the uh, entrails of the unit. There's the backs of the two key switches. And uh, program selector switches. There's the underside of what, 30 years ago, or thereabouts when this thing was made, was an echocadmium battery pack. It's pretty much uh, 10 uh, nickel cadmium C cells, so it's uh, 12 volt, and the thing will also take 12 volts from the, from the supply. Shut up! Anyways, but, um, so it is a 12 volt, or was a battery pack, although I might, see if I can get enough nickel cadmium cells, try to replace it. Seems. And then there's the underside of the uh, printout mechanism, because it does also have a little thermal printer in it for uh, various things, depending on what, which can be set for pretty much anything from either normal operation to only setting excursions, or it'll print out everything. So then there's a little phototransistor, and most likely infrared, because I haven't seen any visible light from it, uh, LED for pretty much determining whether or not there's paper in the thing. Then there's the underside of the uh, real-time clock board, which is, as with a lot of logic in this thing, mostly is either 74XX uh, series or 4000 series, um, either TTL or CMOS. There's a little uh, Hitachi, most likely a RAM chip in the back there. Some little custom chip with a little sticker on it that's a 102897, that's obviously during its part number since their part numbers are all just uh, six digit numbers with maybe a letter tacked on here or there. Possibly some kind of a microcontroller because there is a fairly interestingly built 12.8 megacycle crystal right there. Somewhat unusual to see them in that kind of construction, normally they melt cans. Then there's a couple of 555 timers right there. Some uh, can transistors. This thing is almost 30 years old, so that's some to be expected when you to see things like that. And likewise with the um, carbon composition resistor, there, little buzzer, of course, domestically made, very nice high-end equipment. And as far as interface, because this is because lots of this stuff feeds out to the uh, um, control connections, which are one of which is um, RF232, one of which is I think parallel, but they might be different. That parallel might be for other stuff. I don't know because I don't have any documentation on it. But there's a little um, dipstick um, optical isolator. Because dipstick's packaged devices are typically optical isolators. And a couple of uh, 
Dipper Real Edge. And week 20, week 46 of 1982. So yeah, this one's about 30 years old. And then there's the back of the switch mode supply. There's a little 12 volt connector, cooling fan, potential selector, and uh, international electric technical commission connector and master input field. And uh, can't really get to it because it's all hardwired in and would require a great deal of disconnecting stuff to pull it out, but fairly substantially built, high quality uh, switch mode supply. This is just a paper that I have all the various uh, chip part numbers written on it that I'm going to look up in and put descriptions in in the video later on. The um, triple integration, that is because this is scrap paper and that's when you're trying to explain multivariate calculus to parents who haven't had anything about pre-calc, but besides the scope of this video. Next up is the three phase uh, AC analysis board. Most of the DIP-8 package, or pretty much all the DIP-8 packages that I, devices that I can see on this are either TL062, TL072, or TL082 operational amplifiers, a whole bunch of uh, trimmers, most likely resistors, but I think some of them, I don't know, they're most likely resistors, but some might be caps, although they don't really look like it, probably just resistors. Uh, then there's this little, three of these little devices. This uh, board is configured into three strips where you can see that the layout of components is pretty much the same. So these are just one analysis um, strip for each of the uh, three phase inputs. As uh, those little there. Helps having a camera that doesn't completely suck at macro shots. There's these little round thing of devices which are labeled Johansson or Johansson or whatever, 9614. They look like there might be some kind of a... I don't really know what those are. Uh, that will require further research. Then there's these things which are probably ferrites, although those might be turned ferrites. Although they might be uh, fuses, but I'm guessing they're probably just ferrites for noise suppression. And each section has one of these FSA 2619 chips, uh, 325 of 1982. And then elsewhere there are these Harris. Some are HTI 0201-5s and some are HAI 4905-5s. I'm guessing because I haven't done any real part looking up on this, or part research on this, because I just recently opened it up. Uh, those are probably some kind of precision, or at least um, analysis slash metrology chips. And then over here there's a um, CD4060 CMOS logic. That's the analog portion of this board. And there's the digital portion, which are two big, um, the two um, EPROMs, because you can feel under them the little quartz erasing windows. One of which is probably a configuration, oh no wait, this, no wait, um, yeah, one of them is probably a configuration for the board, because each board, which I'll go into a bit, has, and uh, has a similar EPROM, so that's most likely just has, says what it does, what the IOs are, um, miscellaneous configuration data because there are a number of different modules that can be plugged into this thing depending on the intended purposes of it. Then there's a little, um, or not little, but it's a MC, it's a Motorola MC146805 E2L, most likely the master controller for this, or microcontroller for this particular board, and it's associated with timing crystal. And there's this uh, 8041-337, that's that other chip with the uh, gold cavity lid there. As another one of those Harris chips, it's an HTI 2201-5. And other than that, it's all either 74XX or some associated family like lots of the 74Cs or 74HCs, or it's um, a TTL or their um, 4000 series uh, CMOS. Logic, but there are a couple of uh, TL062 operational amplifiers. 
except for this one ship here, which is, which I just noticed is a, I think a National Semiconductor DP8304BN or INS8208BN or SP8247. I'm guessing the 8247 is the date code, 347, 1982. Then for the uh, DC board, there's this can device, which I'm guessing might be some kind of an input filter. And as with the other one, bunch of um, mostly uh, um, CMOS or TTL. Um, and a bunch of little operational amplifiers. There are a couple of the um, Harris chips. But pretty much like the other one, it's all mostly um, discrete logic chips. There's another configuration data, uh, EEPROM. And then there's this an another chip with a gold cavity lid, which is, uh, I'm guessing, some kind of uh, analog digital converter, although I'll have to look that up. An AD571JD, I'm guessing a lot of that is from the, um, the part number, the AD in it. And then this alt board, the DC board, also has an impulse analysis option. Part number 110680, again, domestically made, yay. Uh, this one, like with the other one, it's mostly um, uh, discrete logic. Another operational amplifier right there, TL082. I oh, know that's a TL081. And there is a, uh, although one chip, there is an LM311 right there. And more of the Harris chips. Then, in the uh, most likely the uh, CPU interface, which is probably part of the brains of the unit, there's a big uh, Rockwell R6502AP right there, which is probably uh, comms of some sort, because uh, Rockwell is a modem chip manufacturer. But again, I'll put that all I'll put that information in the uh, or what that is in the uh, description. Another pair of EEPROMs. Uh, more discrete logic. Again, um, 74XX, 74LS, etc. PMOS 74000 series. There is another chip over here, the uh, SY6551, week 82 or 19. Oh, Week 43 in 1982, and a bunch of Hitachi uh, memory chips. That's most likely the RAM, and an MC6850S, week 38 in 1982, which is probably a processor of some sort, judging by the crystal uh, nearby on the board, and more uh, discrete logic, and another operational amplifier. Although there is one little one thing that isn't a chip. That's an Allen Bradley. Uh, a resistor network. Pretty much a chip with a bunch of resistors in it. Then, in the uh, other portion of this board, there's uh, more, again, mostly uh, discrete logic chips. There is uh, more modem stuff down in here. There are these uh, half dozen quarter inch um, fast on connectors. The tip and the ring ones for the uh, phone out are connected, but there's obviously stuff so that it could use other pairs of the phone line for more advanced um, com stuff that this one isn't uh, isn't set up for. And other than that, there's things like uh, LM339 quad operational amplifier slash comparators. There are a couple of NEC chips, like this little um, DIP8 device right here, which is a C4558. Uh, have to put that in the description. Other than that, it's there are a couple of those interspersed on the board. Like there's one down in there. There's another pair of them right there. And this board is, I think, slightly newer because it has some more um, metal film resistors, which are somewhat newer. Nowadays, they're everywhere, but much of the rest of the thing uses co uh, carbon composition resistors.
But I don't know how much newer it is because lots of their chips are the 1981 and 1982 date code. And then over here is the RMU adapter board. Uh, again, another configuration EEPROM. Some uh, 7.4 XX series logic. Another Rockwell chip, which is most likely for comms. Because again, it's this, this port also has a modem on it. It's an R6551. And it's associated uh, crystal. More uh, 4000 series logic. Oh wait, these are MC1488 and MC1489, so, I, so those I don't think are. Or 75189 and a 75188. So those might be some, something else, I'll put that in the description. And a discrete modem which plugs into that uh, 100 mil on center uh, header. Uh, there's this black device. It's got four pins, uh, three on one side, one on the other, and it's got the drain its apart ID sticker on it. Other than that, I have absolutely no idea what that is. It's probably some kind of telephone comms device. There's a little signal transformer because again, this is a modem. And a little uh, grants bridge, most likely for determining whether or not there's a ringer or the um, and AM. Uh, there's, a, the there's, there's signal on the phone line that's for detecting the um, dial tone. A little opto isolator. Another TL062 operational amplifier right there. Buried under this crystal, so it's probably a control, a microcontroller of some sort. Is a TMS? Is a Texas Instruments T? Texas Instruments TMS 99532NL week 83 uh, pff, week 27 to 1983 then there's a 74LF32 um, more PTL and an MM54C221 somewhat unusual to see that because the 54XX series are the military specification more durable wider operating temperature range um, version of the uh, 74XX series and consequently more expensive. Somewhat unusual to see that since I've, since I think that's the only 54XX chip I've seen in this um, device. So I'm guessing they might have just been out of stock because other than that they are pin compatible and uh, can be substituted. It's just that they're just more durable and consequently more expensive versions of the same device. And that's pretty much it. Fairly interesting unit, though.